Hello, hello, this is Arcades, and welcome to another episode here of Stormark's Build and Rescue, and, uh, yeah, we got the Space DLC. Oh boy, that was an experience. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, with all the ups and downs that have been going on with the DLC coming out, there's a lot of cool stuff that did come out with it. Uh, some stuff we're gonna cover. We're gonna look at some parts here for now. I'm still going over a bunch of the systems. I am gonna discuss what I have figured out and found out so far on my own and uh, talk about what happened. Probably. Maybe. Uh, in my case, I did a stream and it it went well for the most part, but the uh, issues that happened with the start of the DLC is, wasn't pretty and... Uh, yeah. Anyways, we're not here to talk about that, though. We're here to talk about these things. So, for now, we're just going to talk about the new parts, what I know about them, and then we're going to... We'll see from there. But, uh, at least that. So, alright. So, hope you like what you watch. Hope you enjoy what you see. If you do, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Helps the channel out immensely, and, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at these. Okay, so what we have here. First of all, uh, ground level. Now, when I was doing my stream, this is all the parts that I could find. Uh, they're not hooked up right now. They're just literally just sitting here. This was all the parts that we could find, me and my viewers, uh, except for the pistol. That was for an experiment. So we're going to go left to right to the back and uh, see what we can find. Now, these are these right here just sitting out and about. So we have the spate, the uh, exploration suit. You see, looks like it is on the back. Looks like this from the front. All right, and you just unequip it like the others. And you can tell there's a difference between them because the white helmet versus the black helmet. And then we have the spacesuit back and then you got the front not bad gets the job done straight forward and you can see you got yourself a little oxygen bar now they did come they now also have uh supposedly they were talking well, it's not showing it here, but there's supposed to be able to ways you can recharge uh, the suits. Boop. I like how they just bounce all over anyway. But um, we do have this right here, uh, which is the new seat. <laughs> it looks like a weirded, ver weirded out version of the. Uh, control handle and supposedly it does have a hole in the back of it so you can actually put a tank to it and recharge the suit so essentially you can sit here and you get your suit going wee I have oxygen now if you see in the bottom right the bar my help my uh, my oxygen bar is light blue versus the normal like blue okay now what else do we have here we have the directed satellite dishes that's what they were I really hate that the only thing I can see is return to work right now uh, you have a big one and you got a small one uh, supposedly I think these guys have to be pointed at each other to see and or receive info like I said I haven't done much testing on these some of it have some of it haven't and uh, yeah this is one of the things I haven't yet but it does have a rotational control it does have signal strength outputs I'll go more into those when I take it into workbench in a moment but uh, here we got the new solar cell large solar cell it's supposed to be 16 by 16 and here we got the liquid fuel rockets small one right here and as you can see they have gimbal inputs they have a throttle input and an ignition input you got to have the ignition and throttle to get any results out of them outside of you know the fuel but 
And I do, I'm not sure if the electric is needed for the ignition. It probably is. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's definitely needed for the gimbals. And the just, I guess, general operation. And you got the large. And you have the regular, I guess. Now, back here, I have a tank set up. But what this is, is to do a small demonstration of the electrolyzer. Now, <laughs> what this is, is you basically sub submerge this part in water and it will break down the water and give you uh, oxygen and hydrogen. Now, the ratios are different. Like, you'll get one to one, but I think it takes two water to make one of each so two liters of water and i don't mean like uh actually how about how about we just fire this up so right here we have 11 75 of fresh water right Hang on a second. Doing a little bit of math. Okay, so about 52% of this, so half of this, will be converted into hydrogen and oxygen, and it splits evenly. So basically for every four water, you get either hydrogen or oxygen. So for every two things of water, you get one liter of oxygen, one liter of hydrogen. The best way to show that is just by running it. And it's not slow either. It's not like horribly slow. I don't know if it's fast enough to like keep up with like supplying, um, like fuel systems like active fuel systems <laughs> now i'm not using any pipes at all this is literally hooked up straight into electrolyzer so it is all here i empty the tanks out so the only thing they're going to have is the hydrogen in this one or you know the oxygen in this one now each it, when it spawns in, it spawns in with, you know, the two ports, right? Well, this one is, one is specifically hydrogen and one is specifically uh, hydrogen. One is specifically oxygen, one is specifically hydrogen. And it literally just releases it. So you just have to put this in a contained space in a custom tank and it will transfer water. Now, I'm pretty sure I tested it with uh, fresh water and I tested it with seawater and it worked the same without any issues i will double check in a moment to confirm that now some other parts we got with it okay yeah you see stopped at 291 slightly very very slightly more oxygen but not enough to, for me to call a difference and it's pretty much empty so it's at 291 and if we and we take the 291 and divide it by divide it by the 1122 that it was shown at the start. That comes out to like 0.259 and some change. So it's like 26% of the volume is changed into hydrogen and 26 is changed into oxygen and the rest is just discarded, I guess. At least that's from this initial testing. All right, and as you see, I got them both here, standing up and down. I was looking on the thing. Now, uh, we know what a lower fluid tank is. Everybody knows what this is, but you can see uh, this thing's just filled with diesel. Diesel and air. Which is rather interesting, so to speak. How, you know what, I'm not going to argue with it right now. Oh, if you see up there, it has at the top a new stat, pressure. Right now, this says it's 
and some change ATM. Pretty much we're all agreeing with the people I've talked to that that means atmosphere. So we're at six atmospheres, which should be six times the capacity of the tank, which is listed at 46.88. So we take 46.88 times 6.29. It comes out to like 294. So, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of difference in there overall, but, you know, it, it's there. Uh, okay, here. Fluid port end. This one was added. This is one of the newer ones. It's just a fluid port. That's all it is. Like, it has the same exact description as a fluid port. It has no difference. And it threw me off for a while, but basically it's just a, a fluid port, and that's all it is. It's a fluid port without the, you know, without the voxel and such. Uh, but it's actually, it looks like a salt shaker. <laughs> it looks like a salt shaker. <laughs> okay, here we have an RCS thruster. This only has a composite input. That's all it has. It has a lot of data for it, though. <laughs> and I'm going to have to go into the note to show you that when we go in the workbench. We have a liquid relief valve. Apparently, it's a two-way street for uh, liquids. And the same thing for this gas relief valve. And they really do stress the difference between gases and, fluid and liquids now. So before, you know, steam was kind of, you know, everything was considered a fluid you know, of some sort, and might have gas as a secondary label or something like that. But yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, they're definitely two different ones here. Now we have the new tanks as well. Uh, I think one might be hiding. No. Okay. So we got a small gas tank, medium. This one's laying on its side because I was trying to see the port. And there it is. Then we have large. And then we have huge. Why does it feel like that says 100 atmospheres? Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna argue it right now. Not gonna argue it. <laughs> we also have the new astronomy sensor. Looks like a cup holder. And we have a gas meter. As well as a liquid meter. Well, we've always had a liquid meter. Uh, but it was like always a fluid meter. And now it's been changed to the liquid meter. So we're going to leave that one as is for there. Uh, here's the barometer. For the pressure listed. And these are also new. These are reaction wheels. They're kind of meant for negating uh, torque, I guess you could say, for helping to control stuff. And they have a description in there that makes it exciting because you might be able to use helicopters once again without having pesky microcontrollers involved. I don't know for sure. I still gotta check it out. I still need to confirm this, so I'm not saying it's a yay or nay, but it's just theorycraft. And then you have the large one and the regular one. So, uh, yeah, that's all the parts I found, found with my chat, uh, on my stream, and, uh, yeah. So let's take a look at these workbench and check a lot of the logics on each of them as well. Alright, so we're back in here. We're gonna start from the back, because, yeah. So we're just gonna go to logic, and we're gonna go straight to the data. And the electrolyzer has only one, one data input, and that is turn it on and off. That's it. The only other data port it has is the electric, because it definitely doesn't have composite, and there's no need for it to have the others. We have... Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all there is <laughs> for that poor thing. Now... For the tanks, they got an addition. 
it got an upgrade. You can, uh, you have the tank output, which we all know about, but there's an actual pressure output now too. So you can monitor the pressure in the tanks. This of course comes with the gas tanks as well. And then you got the fluid, the you know the gas and liquid. They're the you know they have their thing with the capacity and levels. Uh, we have the barometer, which just gives out the pressure. We got our rotation wheels. They have an input rotation value. And then we get to these guys, the reac reaction, uh, or the um, the liquid fuel rockets. You got your ignition. Then we have our gimbal X, our gimbal Z, and our throttle. Now, you got to remember, the reason why they're doing Z, the reason why they're doing Z, uh, hang on. I think, okay, and I am, I believe X is your horizontal, Y is technically your vertical, and Z is, so, or, uh, okay, so, that would be X, for example. This would be Y. Or no, 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 no. Um, okay, hold on. This would be X. This is Y. And then this is Z. So, and this is, again, I am probably underestimating this but this is this is your x and y your throttle would be more in tuned with what this is with your y so your x y and z your x and your x and z are your horizontal movements and y is your vertical movement so that'd be more related to your throttle so x y Z. That's the best way to look at it. X, Y, Z. Left, right. You know, it's like left, right, up, down, forward, backwards. You know, something like that. And then you got your ignition. However, your throttle. Obviously, you got to have <laughs> this enabled for this to work, and this has to have a value for this to make a difference. <laughs> if you don't have both, they're not working. I kind of had fun with a uh, a very crude jetpack, thanks to it. When spinning all over the place, thankfully. Now, we have our directional targets, because guess what, y'all? And pitch. And then I believe the rest of this should be, and then you have a signal output, and then the rest of this is kind of just like a, you know, like a, any other, you know, all the other radios. You know, you have your frequency, your transmit mode, and then you'll get a signal strength out of it. And these guys have the same inputs. And then you have the seat. It's a seat. It has all the same outputs as a seat. It's just all the additional properties that go, you know, with it. Because if you come back here, get rid of this, you'll see there is a fluid import right there. You know, for recharging air and such. Uh, I thought they said they were adding ports of these things to recharge suits as well? I could be wrong on that. I swear they did say they were... Oh yeah, there it is. So yeah, there is a port to... Now, is this... On all of them.
No, apparently it's only on the actual specific exploration suits uh, boxes. So keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so now we've got all that. Uh, like I said, the seat has all the typical seat controls. You know, you're a one through six, you got your occupied, you got your trigger, your eight WASD, left, right, up, down, you got your looks. So yeah, so that takes care of all the regular data, now composite data. Ah, uh, here, we have, the seat still has the same composites for it, the different values for there. And the composites for the radio dishes are also the same. They're still the composites. They're the same as any other radio device. Then we come to the back here. We have the astronomy sensor. Uh, number of channels. It gives you your exposition relative to the urn, Earth moon trajectory from negative one to one. Y position relative to the Earth Moon. Trajectory 0 to 1. Earth to Moon. And 3, Z position relative to Earth Moon trajectory negative 1 to 1. Not sure how all that actually relates until I can actually get into space and do a double take on all of it to get the data and see how it compares. I'm sure other people, I'll find out from other people how it works and then I can actually compare data uh, to my own experiences, but we will get to that at some point. Now, here is the biggest change I cheered for on my stream, because this is something me and a bunch of other people have been looking forward to. So the gas and liquid meter now have composites. They now have composites. And what those composites do, not only will they tell you the values in there. So here's a gas meter. Outputs the volumes of individual gas types on the respective channel. The data can be directly merged with a liquid meter. The air fluid type is equivalent to the sum. The air fluid type is equivalent to the sum of the oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen values. And the channels are four for air, five for CO2, eight for steam, 11 for oxygen, 12 for nitrogen, 13 for hydrogen. So oxygen is basically one, two, and three plus 10. <laughs> uh, it's not one, two, and three. I try not to get it confused. But the point is, is that, you know, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen is 11, 12, 13. And then the liquid meter. So all that same stuff, but instead, you know, we got one and two and three is water, diesel, jet fuel, respectively. Six and seven is oil and seawater, respectively. And slurry and nat saturated slurry on nine and ten, respectively. So the fact that all these channels thing can line up with each other, you can now actually tell what is in a tank. With composite data this means you can make screens to show these values and oh my god yes <laughs> oh I'm gonna be happy about that okay now and then finally to this little bad boy Whoo! this one's oh this one's a uh, this one has 18 channels on it 18 channels all from your component X plus, your component X minus, component Z plus, component Z minus, you know, enable position stabilization, enable rotation stabilization. Those sound like on off channels. Uh, body X plus, body X minus, body X. Body Y plus, body Y minus, body Z plus, body Z minus, body rotate X, body rotate X minus, 
body rotate x plus body rotate x y minus and then body rotate z plus and body z minus 1 through 18 Ooh, those now the thing is is you don't necessarily need to actually know every single one or use every single one of them you just know have to know which ones you need to use at any given moment and you could probably use you know simple tilt sensors for most of this to correct it and such but uh, you know we'll find over time how those are gonna go now let's take a look at some of these in their descriptions Now, the RCS thruster, a fluid jet that fires pressurized air for attitude control and translation, direction control. System can fire in four non-cardinal directions, resulting in five directions of motion. They also have body relative activation modes where thrusters will collaborate from different orientations to achieve the desired translation or rotation. The RCS thruster ha also has positional and rotational stabilization toggles. So basically a way to say, hey, stop spinning. <laughs> uh, fluid supply and electric, along with the composite input. And it's only one mass. That is actually pretty light considering. All right, then we have, like I said, there's the electrolyzer. Machine that separates water into hydrogen and oxygen, submerge the electrodes in a volume of water, and provide electric. Pretty straightforward. Relief valve for liquids in a system. The valve allows liquids to pass across two directional valves. Then you just fluid A, fluid B. And this one has for gases and for liquids one each same description you have your tanks tank for storing gas tank will spawn full of the selected fuel of the fluid type and this says the same thing but for liquids gas meter measure how much gas is within enclosed volume this will output a quantity in liters and the total capacity in liters and then you have all your outputs there Astronomy, sensor that provides raw space navigational data, outputs relative position based data based on the optimal target trajectory between the Earth and the Moon. Optimal seems like a very interesting word to use in this situation. Measures current air pressure, returns the pressure in atmosphere, so the compartment or the current altitude. Stabilization that outputs a force to counter the input rotation. This component can be wired directly to an aligned rotation sensor to stabilize angular rotation sensor to stabilize its rotation. Okay, so here's the one that's gotten me excited. This is the one that made me think in my head about something. It might be possible to counter the rotor torque with these things. So you don't even need a, uh, you don't necessarily need even a uh, tail rotor to actually counter the force, you just need it to steer. I will be testing that in the future. I hope it goes well, but that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that description. <laughs> Okay, now we got the large solar cell. Generates electrical current based on the time of day and angle towards angle towards the sun. I don't think the other ones had that before. Hold on. I don't think the small one said that before. Oh, it does. I think that got changed. Because I remember it just used to be time of day. All right. A liquid fuel rocket engine. Fuel with liquid oxygen and hydrogen. <laughs> I mean, it's not much more than that. It is really simple. Now, you notice the ports each ask for a specific fluid. So, yeah. You can't just put one in randomly and expect it to work. 
All right, directional. A powerful directional radio and video data tr transmitter and receiver. Oh, it transmits both video and audio. Well, it the fact that it says video. Ooh, that's that's nice. Data transmitter and receiver must be pointed at the target RX device. Sends and receives data on the specified frequency. Transmit mode defaults to receive max effective range at ground level 10,000 kilometers. Ooh, that makes me wonder. Uh, oh, max effective range at ground level 20 kilometers. Uh... Huge, large is four kilometers. Medium is at one kilometer. Small is 100 meters. Wow. I knew it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a huge field, but it felt like it was farther than that. Huh. Okay, whatever. So, uh, but yeah. So 10,000, oh, 10,000 kilometers. Oh, yeah, that range is insane. Uh, 8,000 kilometers for this. There's not a huge difference between these two. Like, at least I figured, you know, at least half the distance, but holy shit. All right, and finally the seat. A compact control handle you can get in of it and interacting it by using F. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is exactly the same. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, here's another why uh, the, the, the gimbals like I think is lit. Your X and Y, your look Y, so your look is up and down. So your look Y, so yeah, I'm pretty sure Z is your... Uh, X is left and right, Y is looking up and down. So I guess Z is moving forward and backwards, yeah. So, boop, boop, boop. Eh, uh, something like that. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's that's an overview of the parts. Um, not much to it other than that, really, because it's... Yeah, I mean, that it is what it is. So, uh, let me have a little fun with something, and uh, we'll end it off with that. Give me a second here. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall
So, yeah, I made a, a little uh, stunt rocket, a little proof of concept, and uh, yeah, so something I found out about the RCS controllers, they actually do have a slider. If you go to select tool, they do have a slider, so you can adjust the strength of their output. But uh, yeah, so I put this, the rocket engine is on my, uh, it's on my space bar, which is on toggle, so it is on right now. I just hit five and six from the seat, because I got the seat just going straight into those controls. I don't know if those RCS thrusters are technically aligned right, but uh, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's see what happens. Throttle up. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Where but oh uh yeah this is something you need to watch out for don't go face first with that <laughs> uh yeah oh and one last note you have an area back here for building uh space stuff right here next to O'Neill Air Base so you can there's a bench that's right back here it spawns way away from there and there is a build site at the launch complex the monkey brain launch site right over here so you can Do what you need to do right there. Uh, but again, be careful. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, this has basically just been an overview of the new parts that I found on from the Space DLC update and the available options and going over probably theorycrafting what they can and can't do at any point. So uh, yeah. Ah, so, hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed what you watch. If you did, you know the deal. You know the spiel. This is Arcades, signing out. Have yourself a good day. Whee! Are there... Oh, hello. The camera goes farther now. <laughs>